everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Uh, today, we are hosting a dear friend and mensch, uh, Rabbi Eli Weber. Uh, he was gracious enough to come on today as one of our new guests, hopefully one of a returning sort. Uh, years ago, during the beginning of the pandemic, he, when he started his channel, he was gracious enough to have me on his live chats, and we would talk about a very sundry amount of information, some of which we'll be talking about today. And so, again, he's been nice enough to join us. Again, if you're new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share, as it does help the channel grow. Without further ado, Rabbi Eli Weber, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, uh, Yonatan. I'll call you Yonatan for now on. <laughs> That's my uh, Hebraic that's... name, right? So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. He's been teaching me about uh, the history of the Hebraic uh, language as well, among other things. Many, many things, as it turns out. So, Rabbi, let's start with that. Um Tell our audience is not familiar with you because we'll bring your channel up at the end so people can find you and all that good marketing stuff. Um, how did you get started being a rabbi? What you know? What was the calling like for you? And how did you come into this movement? What was the inspiration? Well, I'm not. I'm not officially a rabbi, although a lot of people think that I am a rabbi. But I'm. I'm pretty clearly not a rabbi. Uh, but uh, how did I get here? I. You know it. It's interesting that you're in Nashville because I think this my whole journey really started in Nashville. I I am a songwriter. I, by the way, I just published my first uh, first song, which I had recorded in Nashville. At, that's on my on my channel, um, Language of the Heart. I'm very excited about it. Um, but I while in Nashville, I was searching on the internet one day for enlightenment. I've I've been chasing this idea of, of ascendancy and enlightenment for many decades. This was like 30 years ago. And off screen, I had a kind of a vision that said, you know, what you're looking for on the internet, you're not going to find. It, the, the vision told me, it said, until the holy temple is rebuilt, there will be no enlightenment on the planet. So I didn't know you know anything about it i was not religious at the time and i called uh, the the vision said call the rabbi you know call so i called a rabbi in nashville who was zalman posner at the time and he said uh, i said rabbi i have to come to shul today he said don't come he says today's not such a good day he says come come on shabbos we have a nice uh, kiddish we'll have a little food and everything is in english but today's not such a good day I said, no, Rabbi, I have to come today. So I didn't know it was the 9th of Av. The 9th of Av is the day that both temples were destroyed. And that was the day that I had this, this sort of vision. So I, I came to temple. And, you know, usually when you go to synagogue, people are dressed up. And, but on, on Tisha B'Av, on the 9th of Av, we're mourning the destruction of the temple. So everyone was sitting on the floor in, like, schleppy clothes and, like, sandals. I mean, that, you're not allowed to wear leather shoes on. You're not supposed to wear leather shoes on uh, the 9th of Av. But I came in and I saw these people sitting on the floor, like grown men and women sitting on the floor with candles. And I was like, I was like, man, I, I was a hippie at the time. And I was like, man, these are real deal godly people. They're really into it. So I just I was with them ever since I stay. I've been with I've been you know religious for the last, you know, almost 30 years now. Gotcha. Thank you for that. And while we're on the subject of, of correcting each other, or keeping each other on on point. Um, I'm not in Nashville yet. I'm in California, but post RV, I will be, as you know, in Franklin. So that is definitely much in the works. But uh, yeah, th thank you so much. Yeah, because you're also a songwriter. And that was one of the many things we had in common along with Tennessee and kind of our long term vision of things. So many people that know you know you for a number of different um, intellectual touch points, we'll call it for lack of a better term. And one of them is a subject that we're going to be broaching a little bit more on our podcast. Uh, we're going to have uh, next week, Dr. Scott Young, a friend of mine who is uh, aficionado on Nessera. And I know that Nessera Jessera is part of your vocabulary. So uh, if you don't mind just kind of giving people an, an overview of how you came into that and what are you seeing from your, you know, touch point of, of Intel in terms of that rolling out for the whole of society. 
Yeah, it seems like it's, uh, I think, I think it's imminent. I think it's actually already in place. I think the I believe from what I'm seeing that the quantum financial system is already in place. And the quantum financial system goes hand in hand with Jasara and Nasara. Uh, it's going to be, you know, we're coming into a new economic system that will be, it won't be like, you know, you get a new bank and, you know, it's it's a whole different, it's a, it's a revolutionary transition into a new world, into a new republic, uh, and into an, an era where there'll be no poverty, no, I, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. You will not lack for anything. We will have everything. There will be no taxes. The tax system is basically, from my point of view, is already already rolled into, it's already been taken down. I mean, if, you know, I, I know this is sort of a controversial thing. To, it might be a controversial thing to say, but I, you know, I haven't paid taxes for years. I'm not interested in supporting that system whatsoever. But you know, the, we we won't have taxes. We will be taxed on new items. If you buy a new car or a new house, you will pay. I think a 15 percent tax. But that the the whole system, the government will be 10 percent of the size. All debts will be. Uh, you know, written off. It'll be like a jubilee year. They, they, and I think in in some ways they already have been. It's just we don't know about it yet. And a lot of this situation really involves personal ascendancy, personal enlightenment. <laughs> it's a personal journey, and once you understand the pieces to the puzzle, you you just say to yourself, you know what. I'm not paying taxes. I'm not. I'm. I'm not doing it. Um, I also don't have insurance because I'm not interested in the kind of things that, you know. I don't want to say this on on your channel, uh, but because it's uh, problematic. But you know, it, there's an obvious reason why I don't have insurance. I th I think people can figure it out without me saying it. Uh, the world is about to be completely transformed, and I think it is it is fairly imminent. I think the Super Bowl was a big marker, and I think the fact that nothing happened at the Super Bowl, we were all waiting for something momentous to happen. I think the fact that nothing happened is huge, and we should take that as a, as a sign that, you know, it's about, it's all about to go down. I'm looking at March for some pretty serious things to happen. But if you look behind the curtain, Jasara Nasara, I think, is well underway. The critical, the tipping point, I, from what I understand, will be the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. And you can see that in the news uh, just recently, the Iraqis made a proclamation that they were giving the Americans 90 days to get out of Dodge. So that's a, that's a sign because once the once America has completely withdrawn from Iraq, that's when the dinar will be revalued and everything will change, everything. Yeah, it's actually, I uh, we talk a lot about that on our show. I'm sure you've seen it. It's actually, just so you know, it's two months, so we're already kind of in the midst of it, but I don't think our military is going to withdraw so easily. I think that's more of a head fake to draw the Iranian proxies out of parliament so they can go in and take them because we're not going to leave until, you know, we get satisfaction. But then there's another side. There's always, you know, duality, right? And parallelism in this whole thing, which we'll go back to Nessar in a second. But just on the backs of what you're saying, you know, there's there's some people I think the military is not going to leave until they get the reinstatement of the dinar. And then others think that, military or the U.S. does not want it to happen because we don't want competition, which we don't, but we're going to get it anyway because of BRICS and many other elements tied to that. They're not going to have a choice. It's going to be an east-west reset, as you are aware, and they're going to be upset. And so we're watching for sanctions to come upon <clears throat> uh, the, the uh, Iraq for a few weeks until, you know, Sudani, the prime minister, comes and gets ahead of it and gets that released. And we'll get into that in a second. But going back to Nessera, because I've had people contact me privately, showing me receipts and texts and emails of, hey, I got my credit card and mortgage. I had somebody on our Rumble channel, I took a look the other day, on one of our shows, uh, say, hey, you know, I just got my credit card forgiven. So we're seeing that, right? But then we're seeing other people say, well, I haven't seen anything and I'm getting a lean on this or I'm getting that. So it's 
it seems, Rabbi Eli, that we're getting a lot of this uh, a duality once again with everything, particularly with Nessera. So what what could you say from your vantage point, people you've talked to that you've see, seen experience Nessera and Jessera that could make them feel better about the fact they haven't seen it as of yet? Yeah, I, I believe that, I mean, it, it's, I believe we're seeing a revolution in consciousness. So if you don't believe in Nasara Jasara, it won't happen for you. You you have to you have to fully understand it and believe it. Like I I stopped paying my credit cards uh maybe like a couple of years ago. And they just they just they don't bother me anymore. I mean, they, they, it used to be listed on my bank account, but but it, 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 what the the whole point of that I believe is that what we are about to see is that human consciousness is that we are manifesting our reality. So if you believe, if you're afraid and you're worried about the IRS, the IRS could come after you. you you're manifesting it. I personally, I don't believe the, the IRS really exists in any real, in a, in a serious way anymore. So it can't affect me. You know, what you're saying, Eli, is really interesting because it reminds me, you know, the Old Testament Proverbs 23, 6, as a man thinketh or a woman, so they become. So what you do think about, it's biblical, dictates your reality. And in, in many instances, not all, of course. Um, <clears throat> okay. So then you were talking about, you know, the dinar, which we know is a, is a hotbed. Let's go back a second to something you said that's very important. I'll tie a couple things together and pick your brain about it. Uh, with the Super Bowl, because we know that's cabal coded, deep state, the Niners were set to win. And I'm going to tie in one of your favorite subjects, Bitcoin, um, and I have questions about that in part. So we'll go section by section. Uh, it was by Currency365, somebody that I personally subscribe to quite a bit for a number of years. He's been accurate on many, many things prophetically. He was saying that Bitcoin is going to be close to 49,000 by the time the Super Bowl hit. And as I looked at it, it was around 48.3, 48.5, but it never quite got over that, much like the game when the Niners were in position and just weren't able to close the deal. They were coded for, in the cabal codes, for people who understand what that means, there's a series of co codes and numbers that the deep state uses to pre uh, use predictive programming. For those who know, they know, you know. And we saw that that didn't happen, but it's interesting. I think that's the second Super Bowl in history, if I'm not mistaken, to go to overtime. It's one of the few. So it, it was rare. And so we didn't see, like you said, that happen. I know a lot of people were disappointed because they thought that, well, at least if the Niners won, we could rip the proverbial Band-Aid off and start getting the bloodletting to happen. But you seem to think, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, that by nothing happening, that's actually a good thing. Can you Can you articulate that a little bit, please? I can. I'm going to give kind of a strange metaphor for the whole thing, but it's kind of, I use this on my channel this morning. It's kind of like everybody says, you know, d does God exist? You know, where is God? What What is God? And it's like, the, the thing is, it's not, it, I mean, th this is kind of a mystic thing to say, but it's not, you know, does God exist? It's do I exist? I mean, in other words, God is everywhere. God is everything you see physically. I'm looking at a microphone. That's part of God. That's everything is godliness. And yet we don't see him. We don't feel him. We don't consciously say, ah, oh, there's God. We don't we don't see this reality for what it really is. So so in a way, like God is like his silence is deafening. You know, it's God is everywhere all the time in every thought, everything, every, your every breath, every, you know, everything you see here, whatever. And yet you don't see him. And it was kind of like the same thing with the Super Bowl. We were all waiting for, you know, atomic bomb to go off or, you know, God forbid, or, you know, all these different things, satanic, you know, rituals. They have been using satanic rituals. But I think the fact that nothing really colossal went on is was a huge sign although now you know now that you mention it i mean bitcoin's going up to 50 so it wasn't that there was nothing going on bitcoin is you know from what i understand is supposed to it, it has nothing it's not being supported by anything real there's nothing behind bitcoin it is propped up by tether which is like it's it's a like a digital version of fiat currency, which means it's it's nothing. It's a nothing burger. There's it, it's a fake. It's a Bitcoin is a, is a, you know it's like the fiat dollar. There's nothing there. 
you just you could print a, a lot of it if enough people believe in it they believe it has value i mean although today i, I went with with my girlfriend we go to the market and we we bought two organic we eat organic food uh, two organic grapefruits for seven dollars i mean you can't tell me you know this is new york city but you can't tell me that the value ha you know that the dollar has real value anymore it, it, it's it, it's a joke and the same thing with bitcoin i think we've been i've been hearing for years and i've stayed away i've lost i've not, i haven't made the kind of money i could have made on bitcoin because I've I've always been afraid of it, and I I just I've been hearing for like five years it's going to zero because it has no intrinsic value. It's it's a store of wealth. It's incredibly slow. It um, you know, it's not it's not as secure as it could be, and it's just you know, it's uh, from my point of view, it's it's a it's a really risky thing. On the other hand, I invest in like stellar lumens. And other, you know, two hundred twenty-two coins, and they—they're just doing their thing, man. They're not—they're not going up. You know, they're going up a little bit, a little bit down. But Bitcoin is going to the moon. So, you know, where does it end? I think it ends in a uh, in a reckoning for Bitcoin. I mean, that—that's what I've been hearing for the last couple of years. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, uh, Eli, it, again, another classic example, duality, right? Parallel presidents, we'll get into that in a minute, parallel economies, parallel administrations, you know, parallel militaries in a parallel economies and in with what I call the sub economies, because obviously crypto is its own animal. And so when I say we, I'm talking about those who know my, my followers, we have a team of about, I, I'm blessed to have a team of about I don't know, I've lost count, 20 to 30 people intermittently that come throughout my my day or my life and say, hey, you know, this is what we're seeing and why we're seeing it and the ins and outs. And we pray about it and we really use discernment. And we think deeply before we kind of come on these shows and talk about it because we, like you, have a responsibility to a, the respective community to be as honest and accurate as possible, not to just say salacious things to tickle the ears. You know, that, that I think has done our community, a, a grave disservice. And so like you, you and I have many things in common, one of which is we want to, uh, you know, be as integrous as possible in that regard. So um, our team, with that being said, the table believes wholly to your point that we believe the top point but for Bitcoin is probably somewhere between 60 to 65,000. And then when the halvening happens sometime this spring, we see it dramatic, dramatically dropping. Um, I, I, we don't do dates and rates here, as you know, but looking at timeframes, I would say that we probably, it's reasonable to expect Bitcoin will go to zero sometime later this year. And then as the new system tra transitions optically completely, uh, it, it can easily go somewhere in the six figures at that point, because at that point it'll be decentralized and backed by something actually tangible instead of just, you know, numbers on a screen, like you were saying. And you're also coming out of the the Swift system. Hmm, what a coincidence! Super Bowl Swift, you know. I mean, they they tell us all these things in code, but we just don't we don't pick it up. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. And we also are proponents. We're not financial advisors. It's not constituted as financial advice. We're just giving information and knowledge that we've acquired over the years. I have to say that as disclaimer. Uh, but we're also in what we call X marks the spot. XL XLM XRP XDC. You know, going right down the chain: gold, silver, copper. Uh, so tying that together, Rabbi, and and <laughs> your your faith goes back, you know, pre Old Testament, right? So uh, we know that Haggai two eight says the gold and silver are mine, right? And then we also have Leviticus twenty five nine through twelve, which is talking about that ever present debt jubilee you mentioned earlier, very very astutely. Um, what is your thought tying into cryptos with gold and silver and oil? Where do you see those going in the future? You know, I mean, I'm I'm just going. I'm really going on hearsay. I don't have any real. I don't have any real inside intel uh, sources, but the the word on the street, so to speak, was that XLM would be tied to silver, and uh, XRP would be tied to gold. I believe Algorand, maybe Palladium. I mean, these are just some of the ideas. Again, I don't have you know definite proof of this. But yeah, in in the in the Jewish faith in the Old Testament, gold and silver had intrinsic value because 
everything in the temple was was built from it. So, you know, and everything in, in the tabernacle. And in, in fact, in, in today's Torah portion, and, you know, we we read a different section of Torah every week. But in, in this week's Torah portion, they're talking about building the tabernacle, tab, tabernacle in the wilderness. And the tabernacle takes gold and copper and silver. So that gives it a kind of a holiness and and an intrinsic value. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because like you said, it's God's money. And yeah, Algorand, you're correct on that one as well. That's another one that I also hold as good. Iota also is another good one to have. <clears throat> All, you know, being positioned at some point to be backed, like you said, by various precious metals. Um, looking on the <clears throat> geopolitical front, you may be aware of this, but... Uh, Kamala came out today and said that she's ready to step in um, if if the Biden is not able to resume his duties, whomever that might be. And so it's just, you know, it seems like that is a very real potentiality for him to be removed, we believe, by an undisclosed medical illness, because you saw that happen with King Charles last week. And we believe the Pope is also in the wings for that. Um, what is your what are your thoughts on that? Right. Well, I just saw I, I, I just received some intel from, you know, I, again, the you know, the intel sources, you can't really trust them, you know, totally. But they give you hints, just like the predictive programming, give you hints. And if you kind of triangulate it, but they're saying that the the economy would have to crash under Biden so that. And they're also pointing to uh, to March, and you, if you think of the uh, the March twenty twenty in uh, yeah March twenty twenty, that was the time when the COVID thing was rolled out, the you know the uh, mail in ballots, and we're dealing with an election year. So, it, but it seems to me that. Everything has, you know, the in terms of the crash and some of these other things, it would probably ha they're saying it would have to happen under Biden. I don't know how much longer. I'm I'm amazed that he's held out this long. I mean, I, you know, my my in in terms of time sequence, you know, I've been living this life for like five, you know, for years already. I I, I mean, I was, you know, so it's like I already. I already went through all these kinds of things in the past, like like a, a, a love affair with XRP. I had that, and I actually got scammed out of most of it. But um, you know, I I went through that whole thing years ago, and I I you know I I you know I bought a little gold, whatever. I mean, it's just um, it's the time sequence. So yeah, so it looks like Biden will be removed soon, and I think. Things are about to heat up. You know, I would just say that I personally would not be interested in any kind of um, any kind of uh, um, medicines from the mainstream medical community. It just wouldn't be something I would partake of. Ever, I mean, down to, right. you know, I would not even take a Tylenol. I just, I, I, there are much better things to, that I even know about that I advertise on my channel, even that, that uh, you can do for pain and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think we're coming into like a revisited situation. It's, it's going to be a do-over, but I think this time the people, like you were saying, will come to their senses and uh, there will be a, 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 there has to be at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there has to be, and this is kind of biblical. It has to come from us. We, you know, in, in Egypt, God came down and pulled us out and saved us. That got us to where we are today. This time it has to come on an individual and communal communal level where we each come to our own understanding of our own personal power, our own manifestation possibilities, and that, 
you know, that at the end of the day, we all have to, we've all, I believe we've already left or we are, we're leaving the matrix. We're leaving Mitzrayim, which is, which means Egypt, mm -hmm. which Egypt translates, Mitzrayim translates as the narrow place, the place of constriction. I would add also the place of Satan. Um, and we are, we haven't yet come into the promised land. Now, our, my Rebbe always said or said that Makda Yisrael, that, that's Yiddish, but he says, make this Israel. In other words, mm -hmm. the promised land isn't necessarily Israel or a place. The promised land, I believe, is right here. And once you are in line with your own potential, your own understanding of reality, and you you start to understand that you are creating reality, a hundred percent, you know, then you won't have people going, well, you know, but I, but I, you know, but I, I couldn't, you know, and my credit card, and they're still charging me, and they're putting liens on me, and all this stuff. That's because you're still you're still feeding into their fear system. And I know it sounds like, you know, bizarro things, but it, in the in the world soon to come, this will be, you know, we will understand that they have a vested interest in keeping us in fear because if it if they keep us in fear, they can man they can use us to manifest what they what they want. Whereas once you come to understand that the promised land is right here, man, and you just have to just believe in yourself and love yourself and trust yourself and slowly weed out all those things that were taught to you over the years about how you're not good enough, you don't look good, you're this, you're that, you're not as smart as your cousin, you know, you, you can't really, you know, you're useless when it comes to this, all those kinds of thoughts. And I, I did this work back in, when I was in Nashville. Uh, I really weeded out all the negative. Uh, I tried to weed out all the negative thoughts that are planted, deeply planted in my subconscious. Once, you know, once you even become aware of those negative voices inside of you, once you're aware of it, they can't really affect you the way they, they will if until you reach that awareness. In other words, if you start believing that these things are real in your mind, then they are real to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, you, you, as a man think it, so he becomes. So absolutely. Um, just a couple more questions. Cause I know you're, you got your busy schedule. Uh, I know you don't speak for the whole of New York city and all of its various boroughs. And I've lived in Manhattan on the East side of 46 second, you know, Dag Hammarskjöld and lived in Brooklyn and Sheepshead Bay and, and Queens over by Forest Hill. So I have, I have a good amount of experience with your territory being an East coaster myself. Um, but you're an observationalist. I've always noticed that about you and you've got good, uh, astute self-discernment about your surroundings. Would you say, and again, in general terms, would you say, as you've observed New Yorkers, both in the beginning of the pandemic and up to this point, would you say that you, you're seeing slowly a wholesale change in the mentality of a lot of New Yorkers? Are they waking up to things? Are they getting more proactive because I know what they want to try to do is bring that pandemic back on the, the predictive programming timelines with replications from 2020 to 2024. We put that in our telegram channel so people can see the, uh, the timelines of, you know, replication with all that said, would you say your, your knowing is that people are starting to come around and that people are going to be more aware of it this time than we were four years ago? Oh Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I was treated as kind of a, uh, an outlier. And I mean, I, I actually had to leave my community because I felt so, I was so um, outside, you know, I was such an outsider. I was such a black sheep in fighting this thing tooth and nail. I mean, I, cause I, I had been doing my research for many years and I knew, I knew what was coming. I, I understood the, uh, the whole thing. And I was just like, I'm like screaming at people, please, please don't, don't do this. Uh, but I, I just put out a post about uh, with this new timeline to, to a lot of my regular friends that were a little skeptical of me in the old days. And they were just like, 
We're with you, man. We hear you loud and clear. Everyone, the second time around, man, we are ready. We're ready to overthrow the the Satanist and to walk proudly. And our Rebbe said, we will not run like, you know, we will not be running away. We will be walking with, with the, our heads on straight, you know, looking, standing up like human beings. We will walk calmly into the promised land. And it is imminent i believe you we're, we're not far i mean even if it doesn't happen in march it's happening you know if, if it happens in 10 years if it happens in 100 years it's still an amazing amazing transformation of humanity from a slave race into a free people mm -hmm. yeah and we have a responsibility to contribute to the tenor of that movement and that's what i believe we're we're doing or attempting to do right now um, I read a book years ago, I'm sure you're familiar with it, Mystery of Shemitah by uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. And he was talking about 9-11 uh, and how they switched the trees at the Trade Center Towers uh, from, uh, I think they were pine, they tra tra uh, switched them out to cedars of Lebanon at the very end. So it goes back to the biblical foretelling. Um, are you familiar with that book or, or any of his teachings? No. Okay. You might want to check it out. It's, it's really good. I, I got quite a bit out of it. Sounds interesting. I mean, we, we, you know, we now know, I mean, I think we know pretty clearly what happened on that time and, mm -hmm. and what happened with the president in uh, 1963 and all these things are coming to light. And we are, you know, for the first time in, in thousands of years, able to clearly see the enemy and um, they cannot, they cannot operate in, 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 uh, in the open. So we, they're they're gone. They're they're you know it's just a matter of time before they're. We are we are replacing. We are like I said, marching proudly into the, uh, we, and with humility into into the promised land, into the into the era where we will understand that. Anything is possible, and it will be. I mean, I I I'm hearing tapes of people saying that. You know, like reputable people in Space Force saying that we have the technology now where you could you could travel to anywhere on the planet in under an hour. You know, th yeah. these kinds of things, the technologies that, that are that have been kept from us are unbelievable. Flying cars, portals, you'll be able to go. You'll be able to do whatever you're. And that's really part of us of the Great Awakening is understanding that we create with our thoughts. So, you know. Think of it in like as an exponential, you know, uh, outcome of that. Like if if you can imagine yourself without credit card debt, you know, think of in the future. You you want to think about like, well, where do I, with whom, and where do I want, and and what what is the place going to look like that I want to be in in you know in an hour or in, in five minutes. And one one thing I will I do want to add in terms of that particular thought stream is that I once asked Ishmael Perez, Perez, uh, Perez, yeah, I think so. He's he's kind of a um, uh, a a seer on the web. I haven't spoken to him in many years, but I I was in the building trades for I was a builder for many years, and I love architecture and I love the whole concept of Tartaria and really living amongst buildings that are beautiful you look really living in beautiful open places i'm you know i've read the the uh the fountainhead i mean there was a very exciting book to me this whole idea of really beautiful architecture so i asked uh, ishmael i said well what kind of houses are we going to be living in and he said whatever you think whatever you want you will have it you know and you know this idea that we are coming into an age where our thoughts will manifest you know, it it seems like a million miles away from here, but I think it's really it's it's much closer than we realize. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, well, great, thank you, uh, thank you, Eli, for the time, and and look forward to having you back on. Where can people find out about you? Okay, so I'm on X, which um, I'm e e webstar thirteen. E Webstar thirteen on X. I'm also Kabbalah Guru on Rumble. You and I. You can just go to. You could just type in Guru G U R U and you'll find me on Rumble. But I do a live show twice a day, ten o'clock 
Eastern Standard Time and 7.45 p.m. Uh, in the evening, twice a day, every day except for Shabbos. So please, uh, please join us there. Thank you so much for asking. No, absolutely. And we'll put those links in for you in the description. And folks, you heard uh, Eli talking about how he felt ostracized in his own respective community. And I believe it was Brooklyn, right? Eli, is that right? Yeah. And um, was it Avenue G? Is that the area? No, I I lived in Crown Heights. I wasn't really Crown. ostracized. I mean, I'm I'm well loved in my community. I just felt like I just can't. I'm sorry, guys. I can't stay and watch what you're doing to yourselves. It just I I just I couldn't. I I had to leave. I mean, for various reasons, I left, but that was sure. one of them. Well, I mean, when I say ostracized, I mean in the sense of you just felt like a misfit or you didn't fit in, like you, because your your views were so diametrically opposed to the status quo. And so a lot of our followers have, I'm sure, felt the same way I have as well. That's why we created this channel. I just want to let people know we do have a channel called that we're building right now called RealWorldAC.com, and it's going to be built here in the near future. And when it when it hits, we're going to have uh, folks just like you who are looking to connect with other like-minded patriots in a, a privacy setting so we can get rid of you know, ads and trolls and bots and all the distractions that take us away from the chief focus. We'll also have business leaders worldwide. You can connect with other business leaders, maybe compare ideas, maybe even develop channel partnerships, you know, just possibilities of creating networking and synergy. And then people will be able to uh, to get access to people like me, Nick Benyamin, Holly and several other patriots with, on a live chat to answer questions like you do now, Eli. So we'll also leave that link in the description. Eli Weber, thanks for joining us on this podcast. I uh, appreciate your time and we look forward to seeing you in the near future. Great. So, so great to see you, John. God bless. You too. God bless. Shalom.